I know this might be a kind of an odd thing to start sailing with, but let's see what I mean in a minute, I think. Oh yeah, look at that. I'll come back to that in a minute. Let's get out of here. So the issue is, we're just going to back out, of course, but we have very strong prop walk in this direction. And uh, I screwed that up this winter and wound up in the hopeless position. Let's see what happens this time. And the tape is there because of the because sometimes the uh, valve pulpit scrapes against that concrete piling. Yeah, it's going to scrape that, see? Just barely missed it. Once we get going, in reverse, there's no problem with prop walk, but here's what happened to me a couple of months ago. I got turned around so my stern was facing the wrong way. I was across the entrance to the slipway. And ordinarily with subtle movements, forward and reverse, I can make the boat turn, but sometimes the boat won't turn. We don't have bow thrusters. And boy, I spent half an hour trying to maneuver my way out of that spot and never could. What a pickle. I was humiliated to end up at the end of the dock as the diagram shows. And I had to ask the dock master for a tow out of my own slipway. So, perhaps this method will work better. What did you say a flag that looks like that is? Oh, about 10 or 11 knots, I'd say. So I ordered some markers for the Genoa sheet lead positions. So that lead is way off, that's for sure. Well, I'm not gonna do all that work. <laughs> we will now head up 20 degrees. On a close reach, and I guess I better trim it all the way so we can see what the angle is. We're we're trying to we're trying to pick a spot on the on the general fair lead that will make the sail set nicely, meaning more or less the same tension on the foot as on the leech, more or less, and then on different furling settings on the roller furler on the bow those three marks up there help you judge whether you've got 50 percent of it deployed or what and each of those requires a different jib fair lead setting in order for the sail to set right we want the sail to almost touch the spreader and we can see i think that the foot is looser than the leech so that means that the fairly should come back a little bit more. Okay, I think I went too far. 
with the fairly there, the uh, foot is tight, but the leech, it's okay, but it could be in more. Let's take a better, another look. It's hard to tell from that angle just what we're doing. The boat is being steered and was all through these maneuvers by a little Ray Marine wheel pilot, without which, since I'm alone, this would be difficult to do. Just got to keep heading up and off to try to find the right angle. What a day, huh? It's not too bad, actually. I think I will move it one notch forward, just to tighten up the leech a little bit. We'll call it close enough for jazz. Then we'll move on to the other two marks. I furled it to the uh, first mark, or the third mark, depending on how you look at it, and move the uh, fairly forward. Let's see if this works, or if we're even close. This is this reduces our general from a 135 overlap to about a 120 overlap. So that position looks pretty good, I guess. Yeah, that'll be fine. And that is the, call it the third mark on the sail, although it has pulled away a little bit. And now to the second mark. It would be nice to have a crew to crank these winches, wouldn't it? Boy. I'm not sure this single handing stuff's gonna catch on. That is not too bad. I might uh, say that the mark might be one pin further aft just to relieve the leech a little bit because you would use this setting when it's blowing pretty hard it's blowing 18 or 20 so let's make that uh, mark one pin back from where we currently are and then all of these will just transfer to the other side we thank goodness don't have to do this all over again Can't have the head door swinging around. That's my father, halfway to Bermuda. We caught a bird. Say, you're not allowed to do that. My Let's put that on the list to fix. Remember my bragging up the uh, companionway sliders? Well, here's the brag. The sliding companionway hatch rides on pieces of acrylic, which after 40 years have, uh, I guess because of exposure to UV out here, have um, sort of crapped out. So I got some replacement plastic strips and we'll just Put those on there. A little more. Good. So 
So we could certainly sail with a lot more sail area than this today. When I raised the traveler, it pulled the boom in. And when I tightened the main sheet on the, around the winch, it pulls the boom down. And we look at the top batten. It is relieved sufficient for a lazy day. If you want it to go really fast in a race, you tighten everything up, drum taut, and make the top batten almost on the central line of the boat. But as a cruising fellow these days, I never do that. Using the, the Raymarine, we'll just push the button for down 10. And we will automatically find ourselves on a more fulfilling course. Now we're what's called full and by, meaning we're not trying to point. We're trying to get some speed up, have a relaxed course to windward. No muss, no fuss, full and by. And this infernal squeaking from the Ray Marine autopilot, wheel pilot, really, has caused me to install a remedy. Which is the purest water. It comes from a mountain spring in Mudville. And it is the cure. Stop squeaking, you chicken. But it's like living in a hen house when that thing gets a mind to peck around all day. But it's really easy to fix with a squirt of water. It does seem a bit bare up here, I have to admit. Because for years, the space was filled with one of my favorite little boats. But the truth of it is that an inflatable dinghy has much more utility. Even so, spring wouldn't be spring without some painting and varnishing of a pretty little boat that no longer really has a function. I built this dinghy, this, this is the Eastport Pram from a kit 11 or 12 years ago now. I consider this dinghy to be a jewel, which is about all it is. It only weighs 65 pounds. It sounds like a dream, but there, there's absolutely no room in it. So I consider it a decoration, a kind of a an earring as it were, or a necklace or something. I quite like it. It does sit on the deck of Thelonious uh, with great aplomb because I modified the transom to fit the camber of the deck. The stuff for the dinghy sailing kit is... I didn't buy it with a kit uh, and I just made it up myself out of found materials. This mast Oh, well, I don't know, eight, eight feet of it. It's made from laminated Home Depot redwood two by fours. Works fine. The, uh, the, the dagger board is just that, made out of plywood and the rudder. I faked together using parts of the plans from, uh, from uh, Chesapeake Light Craft. Although I did make one error. I ran out of marine plywood uh, for the rudder, and uh, well, let's just say that didn't work too well. I had to remake it.
you know, I consider this to be a springtime sale, but I looked at the calendar and uh, I think tomorrow's the first day of summer. We have had a, a, a winter in Los Angeles of uh, gray marine layer, lots of rain. And the days when it didn't rain, there wasn't any wind. It's kind of an unusual weather pattern, although maybe not historically. But here we are, having done a few of the spring things that everybody is supposed to do, which in California is kind of a 12-month proposition since we never hauled the boats out. They're in the water all year, and it reminds me of the wonderful story of the, during the, after the Civil War, a representative of the state of Mississippi came to Vermont uh, in the middle of winter to uh, interview farmers, and he found a Vermont farmer in his barn with 10 feet of snow outside, and he said, Sir, I'm a representative of the great state of Mississippi, and we have a lot of farmland that isn't being used. If you will come down there to Mississippi and farm our land, we'll give you 500 acres for free. And you know what? Looking around at the 10 feet of snow banks outside and the fact that he could see his breath, said to the farmer, you know, in Mississippi, you can farm all year. And the farmer looked at him and said, you think I'm crazy? It really never does get old. We do, but it doesn't. Time to tack. Know that mainsail's over trimmed. It's going to make the boat head up and the willpower will have trouble, but if we relieve the pressure on the helm, any self steering gear immediately says thank you very much. Now I can do my job. Quartering seas, no problem. I have solved so many problems. Let me tell you a critical issue that I have resolved using only my own ingenuity. So this is where Tracy and I sleep uh, on a mooring when anchored and it's very convenient I mean one just slides up in here and uh, takes a nap or just does complicated long division for practice but the hidden problem is when it comes when it comes time for going to sleep this piece rises up to a new position. That position, in order to give old six foot one of me some place to put my poor little head. Now try to get into it. Why, it's awfully difficult. I mean, you can put your hip here, but there's just no way. And if, if, you're, if your soulmate, or even a close friend, or even somebody you barely know happens to be sleeping there already, you can't get in without making a great deal of fuss. So, there's a solution. And allow me to introduce it. I think in English, it's called a stool, but that's kind of a vulgar word actually. So I like to call it a V-birth step, a custom-made V-birth step. And watch this. Why, effortless entry. Step stool for the V-birth. Those quite easily. 
the much maligned wheel pilot in action. Look at those marks while we'll put our new decals on back at the dock. It's the little things, he said, that make the world go round. And when we have guests in summer, they, they lounge here. Gel coat is one of the hardest substances known to man. And when I put my coccyx on that gel coat, I'm good for about three and a half minutes before the great discomfort sets in. Here's an idea. You know what they don't tell you in sailboat school? That as the owner of a cruising boat, you're mostly the steward. Anyone like another cocktail? Oh, don't bother, I'll clean that up. Oh no, the Dramamine is in the drawer. Let me get it for you. Hey, good day. Kevin, how are you? All right. What do you use those for? Well, depending on the size of the Genoa jib, the, this car has to be in a different position. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's kind of hard to guess each time. Yeah. This gives you a kind of a ah, gotcha. okay. starting point, anyway. What's the math on that? You know, it isn't math. It's, okay. I just tested it, and oh, well, the uh, sails a triangle, and when it's trimmed right and full of wind, the uh, this side and the bottom should be equally tensioned. Uh huh. That looks all right. Looks almost professional. Well, that'll work, I think. And look. It's summer, but I still miss the dinghy. <laughs>